Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Craig Oda, and I'm going to explain to you how you can take part in this technology marketing boom. I'm talking to you from Palo Alto, California. I've been here for 20 years, and I've been involved in technology marketing all that time. It's a ton of fun. It's very exciting. And, you know, although the technology may, you may think it's difficult, I bet you you can get involved in it. It's a small sampling of some of the tech companies and the nonprofit technology organizations that we work with. You know, the really exciting thing is that the work that we do, that you could be a part of, actually impacts billions of people. How is this possible? Well, we're working with, let's say, for example, the OpenJS Foundation that represents JavaScript. So JavaScript is widely used on the web. It's a fundamental technology. Also, things like Linux, or AR, VR. Rico is actually a multi-billion dollar global hardware manufacturer that we've been working with for many years. And they have a, some special cameras to do type of augmented reality or virtual reality. The Open API initiative, they set the specification for cloud-based APIs. And this is the way almost all servers or almost all applications on the cloud uh, talk. Maybe it's not the only way, but it's probably, it's uh, this REST specification is probably the most widely way known way to actually communicate between different servers. The R consortium, uh, R is a language used for statistical analysis, and it's the most widely used language for data science or to get some meaning from these large sets of data that you know everyone seems to have nowadays the cd foundation is for continuous delivery and this is a term used for development and yes we do work with technology and this is something about how we approach technology marketing that i wanted to explain to you and see you know maybe you might be interested in joining us and giving us a help because it's growing very rapidly and we do need help right now. I'm one of the co-founders and partners of Opkey. We're a small consulting firm. We're looking to staff up in Palo Alto. Me and my business partner, Jesse Kasman, the president of the company, we've, we've been working together for many years and we need some help right now because uh, we've started to work a lot more with remote writers across the globe in the United States and abroad. And this portion, we need to track it. So in order to uh, get some additional help, we're trying to hire some staff up in Palo Alto. We are looking for someone with a Bachelor of Science um, and interest in writing. Right? So this is for someone that, you know, you could have an engineering degree, you could have a CS degree, you could have a biology degree, a chemistry degree, a physics degree, you know, but somebody that you're, you're interested in in science, right? You maybe study even data science and you want to write. So it's a writing, maybe a transition in your career, or maybe you, you've studied chemistry and you kind of wonder like, how do you get into marketing? This is it. Uh, you also have to have great organizational skills because there's a lot of moving parts. We do do with a lot of people. Um, so things got a little bit more complex due to COVID. You know, a lot of people are, are remote now, but we do want to work with people face-to-face uh, -face in Palo Alto. So we're looking for someone that they have some science skills, they have an interest in science, you know, they, they studied science in college, and you want to expand into marketing. Um, I like, I've been marketing for 20 years, and I like marketing. It's a lot of problem solving, it's a lot of interaction. Uh, and so if you think you want to put your hand in the game for marketing, uh, listen on. We think that your science, your data science and analytical skills will bring up this organizational uh, aspect and this pr ability to solve problems. Uh, part of this job is gonna be to remotely manage a bunch of project writers. So these are people that, you know, they're only writing maybe one or two articles for us, and they could be anywhere in the world. They could be in the United States. Uh, there's a lot of great writers uh, in the United States, and a lot of them, there might be in academia, and they might be very passionate about these technical topics, but you know they may only have time to write one article a year, or maybe two articles a year. So we want to build this pool, this network of technology writers, leverage these pre these people, their passion and their expertise, 
and then give them a platform to get the word out. And this requires a lot of organization. Uh, you may have to write some stuff yourself. So, you know, if you know a little bit about science, uh, it will help with understanding some of the topics and also probably most critically your ability to solve problems using a scientific method. Like there's always problems and, uh, you know, realistically, if you if there wasn't a problem, uh, no one would get paid any money, right? Or I guess uh, one of my boss when I was younger told me, hey, you know, someone would solve the problem for less money. The people uh, you'll be managing remotely, and this when I say we manage, it's just make sure that they get the deadline in, that they get the topic accepted, and that they uh, submit the work back to us in a timely fashion. So these people are going to be very technical. And we need your help to kind of leverage their strong technical uh, expertise and your writing ability, your organizational ability, and your ability to you know, build some type of rapport and represent the firm in the best light with these executives at these either a company or nonprofits. We usually deal with pretty high level people. Because we're building something and we're building a process here and we're a small company. Uh, so my business partner, Jesse Kasman and I, we're gonna go into their shared co-working space, uh, Hana House, three days a week. And the primary reason is to meet with you uh, so that we can work together as a team to build these work processes out of how to manage this expanding team of this expanding network of writers and you know it's probably won't be that easy to set up the work process so we want to increase your chances of success by meeting with you face to face reviewing what the goals are what the metrics are that we're looking at so that you are super successful uh, if you encounter problems how do you approach the solution to that problem for example if someone's not responding to you by email. It could be the writer. It could be the executive at the nonprofit. It could be, um, you know, some major contact at the client. Uh, how do you approach that? So if there's a bunch of errors in the writing that you receive from another country, for example, how do you approach the editing? At which point do you, do you ask for help? Um, at which point do you send it back to the original writer? I, I think, Although there's guidelines and we have a working process right now, I think we want to scale this out. As we scale it out, there's going to be problems, which is part of the fun, right? Um, you know, if there's no problems, there's nothing to do, right? So almost like problem solving could be viewed as a luxurious feeling. If you're still with us, um, follow on. So we think that giving you direct face-to-face -face feedback on your performance will also be helpful, right? So you're, you're not going to be alone. We're not just going to dump this on you. We all have the same goals here. Uh, and probably the best way to build something is to discuss things candidly face to face. If there's a problem, if it's unclear uh, what you need to do, uh, just it's probably easier if you say it face to face, right? Hey, that assignment, I didn't understand it. You need to be more clear. You could say this to your manager. Probably you would probably be more, a little bit more polite, but basically that message is that. Um, we're going to clarify, like, what is the topic and what's the deadline? What's the process maybe to interact with the client or the executive? So you may be understandably a little concerned about, well, will you be able to produce content or facilitate the production of content on these you know, pretty technical topics? Well, you know, the core idea is that marketing is all about connecting people. And I think you maybe people overlook this when they when they view marketing, but you're basically just connecting different types of people. Uh, it does require some skill to facilitate the connection. But for example, on the uh, on the right, that's me. I, I literally just came from Westfield Valley Fair. Uh, for meeting with this expert photographer. In this case, the guy is a much better photographer than me. I, I'm, I'm not a good photographer at all. But I'm facilitating the connection uh, between this gentleman and another uh, person who's a software developer, uh, solutions engineer at a, a big company, uh, Adobe, in this area. 
and they're discussing some tools for uh, photographers, like really, really cutting edge stuff, right? So these are kind of high level people. And I'm there drinking the coffee. I'm trying to participate. I set it up. I'm talking to them. I'm, I'm following up. I'm getting some information, but I'm, I'm not an expert uh, in this, either the software to deal with uh, digital photography or the digital photographer myself. I don't really have the, the skills of the aptitude, but I can still do my job. Uh, the marketer does have to be able to identify the most exciting things and the most important ideas. And this is, it can be a little tricky, right? So how do you digest a larger body of information, find the things that's most exciting to the general public, not, not just to yourself, but how do you get this thing to resonate with a, a wider group of people? You have to find the, you know, think like your audience, identify the most exciting points, the most important ideas, and then distill that down into a shorter piece of content. Uh, this could be about also future trends, right? So you might ask an expert or maybe one of the writers asked an expert in an email interview, for example, what are some future trends, right? So this is another pretty big topic, right? Because if you, if you get access to an executive or someone on the board of one of these nonprofits, um, their, their vision of the world is going to be pretty, uh, pretty unique, right? They, they have this larger body of information and you ask, okay, what are some goals in the next five years for the organization? And the answer is going to be pretty interesting. So this is one of the ways that by connecting the busy executive with the general public, the person doesn't really have time, right? To fully write a detailed article. You know, maybe they do, but I mean, they're, they're pretty slammed, right? With a whole bunch of other work. So uh, if you can help out, that'd be a great benefit to them. And then how does this technology impact the world and the people in it, right? So people care about how, the, how does this thing relate to me? And by thinking like what are the people in the audience, they're the target audience for the writing or the video or the this creation that we are working on, uh, you can maybe empathize with how, how do they feel about it? Like, what do they care about, right? So if it's JavaScript, obviously web, but what portion of the web, um, do the standards really impact them? And really the technology can be a bit difficult to understand, right? So it's kind of difficult to wade through it, but it is our job. Uh, th this is the job is to make it easier for a wider group of people to understand these difficult topics. And the, the real key here is that we have to be good at connecting people. It could be these experts that are remote writers and they have this expertise with the busy executives that have the vision. Uh, it could be a number of different things, but that is the, the job is to uh, connect different groups of people and then distill the content down. So we're in California. When I say uh, remote writers, we're working with a, the entire world. Uh, we don't want to limit great talent to California. We don't even want to limit it to the United States, although there are fantastic uh, innovators, uh, people with great ideas in the United States. They might be busy. They might be hard to reach. Um, they may only be able to write like one article a year. It, it's fine. But we, we just want to expand and maybe give people in other countries around the world a chance to get their ideas out there too. So we want to have these a network of remote writers and we do have it right now. It's just a little bit cumbersome to track because we're using spreadsheets and, and a database. Uh, we hope to build a more efficient work processes, uh, improve it so we can scale this thing up on a much larger scale get some client interaction going, uh, topic assignment, get delivery back to us. So this would be your job is, we, you know, we'd work with you. We have a process right now that does work, but we want to scale it up, right? So we can get you started and monitor you. But as, as we scale up, we want to have more, uh, more client interaction. And then when we get the work back from the remote writers, uh, there may be experts 
um, in their field, but there may be varying degrees of expertise with writing, right? So that's where you come in. You'd have to be a, a good writer for this job. And so you assure quality control, and then we deliver it back to the client. You know, it's usually just by email um, where you know, we send them, okay, how's this draft looking? And we publish it, uh, possibly on their blog. So as I mentioned before, we will be working from the shared co-working space in downtown Palo Alto in University Avenue. So you should do maybe a Google search on it. Uh, it's called Hana House. It's, it's, we don't have a permanent office. We're a small company. Uh, right now it's me and Jesse and some remote people. But Jesse and I, Jesse lives in San Francisco, so we're gonna go to uh, Hana House. And so these are pictures of us working at Hana House prior to COVID uh, kicking in. Since we had the shelter in place, we have not gone back there. We used to be meeting there um, quite regularly, but we wanna start it up again. Uh, so this is me on the left and I'm writing an article on image processing. So you just bring your laptop in uh, we'll, we'll give you a company a laptop. There's uh, plugs, uh, there's uh, Wi-Fi, there's good internet, there's a blue bottle of coffee on there. On the right-hand side, that's Jesse Kasman, the president of the company. We're doing a, a meetup with other people right at Hana House after work. So he was testing the accelerometer in the camera. That's it, uh, is a sensor that can detect the movement of the camera. So he's jumping. He's a very enthusiastic guy. He's jumping so that we could uh, test the camera. Then, so we took a shot of him and used it for the, uh, for the promotion. Here's two shots of us working in uh, San Francisco. Uh, so let's see. On the left here, this is Jesse, and he's leading a presentation on virtual reality. You can tell that there's some headsets on the table that he's working with. And there were a bunch of people with some really cool technology that we brought over to this office in San Francisco. Um, I think there were maybe like 70 people in the audience. And then on the right-hand side, so I'm on the left and there's Jesse on the right. He's on the far right with a hat. And we're working with a bunch of developers on mobile app development to communicate with a camera. So this is me on the left with one of the products that we help to promote to businesses and developers. So we're not selling uh, this camera to uh, consumers. We are just providing uh, test information, uh, API information to businesses and uh, software developers, but we do have to test it. So I'm walking around this park in Palo Alto with the camera and then I'm analyzing the pictures and writing content about it. On the right-hand side is Jesse uh, with the mask on and the hat. We're actually in Santana Row in San Jose. Uh, this was actually during the uh, shelter in place. So this is after uh, we stopped going to the Hana House, but we, we still had events from time to time. Not, not very many, right? Because uh, everyone's pretty anxious, but Santana Row is pretty bustling. And so we gave out a free scoop of ice cream and people would take their picture with a 360 camera. This isn't the same camera. It's a different company. It's a spinoff from a larger company. And they're, they're global. Uh, so they were, uh, actually this, actually one was in Japan too, but they were selling it in the United States. Uh, we did have some sales there at our little table, but that uh, wasn't the main purpose. I think we were just giving out some discount uh, coupon there, but it was just to get feedback and you know if they buy the camera right there that is a absolute a form of feedback we're just trying to see the reaction of different types of people almost like a our market analysis or a like a like a mini focus group to see how would they react to 360 images and so we had, we had a lot of ice cream actually we we got to the ice cream ourselves too in this one we feel the main thing we're offering is a chance to get some work experience in the technology marketing field. Uh, for people that you may not have been in marketing, right? So you may have been studying, for example, biology, or you may be studying data science, and you wanna give marketing a try. Maybe you like this feeling of working with a group of people. You, maybe you, you want the challenge of building a team together. 
I think that's the main benefit of this job is an opportunity to, to get into the field and to try to build something together with a team. Of course, in addition to that, we do have to offer a reasonable salary. So what we're offering is 62 k a year. Uh, we can review this at six months and one year for potentially more compensation. Let's see, uh, let's see how you're doing at six months and one year. Uh, this is the total compensation. So I want to emphasize that this is the total package. We do not have any type of uh, medical insurance uh, through the company as we're small. You can get it through California Covered. I think some of the younger people, they may be under their parents' insurance up until a certain age. But you're on your own. So you have to view this compensation. Um, I'm assuming you have a bunch of other job offers because we are looking for high quality people, of which you're one of them. And calculate it out. Okay, you know, there's no dental, there's no vision here. So this is what the offer is, plus a chance to try to build something together and a review at six months and a year. So the next step is for you to ask us some questions. Um, you know, maybe you're someone interested, but you don't really know, right? I mean, you're just watching this video and you read some job description, like it's, it's a pretty big move to try to get a full-time job. So you probably have some questions, right? So send us an email with your questions. Um, we can either answer the questions by email or attempt to schedule a 15 minute video call using Google Meet or Zoom. And you're probably pretty familiar with <laughs> online meetings by, by this point. And uh, it's not a job interview as a first step. Uh, I think we just want to see, okay, what's your interest? Uh, and you probably have some questions too. So then if you are, are interested, there is an application process, which you, we can provide more details on. But as part of the process, in order to be hired, you will have to provide some writing samples. There has to be some indication that you are a communicator, that you can communicate. It could be writing for, you know, maybe in college. Uh, ideally, you're writing for a blog. Could be your own blog. It could be an external site. It could have been your college newspaper, or it could have been a just a normal online magazine. Uh, it could be a set of videos that you did on YouTube that communicates something, right? So we're looking for. You like to communicate. You're you're, you're not. Um, you're not hesitant or like you're okay with getting your work out there. If you're keeping your work close to the vest, it's probably not uh, a role for you in marketing because you do have to write and create stuff and then get it out there, right? That's a deliverable. Uh, it's one of the deliverables for marketing. In, in, in this case, we're doing content marketing. You are managing other writers too, but if you're shy about your own communication skills, uh, you, you'll be stressed out. And nobody wants that, right? <laughs> so also in the interview process, we need to discuss what your goals are, your interests, your skills and experience. And it's, we have to mutually assess. Uh, you probably know yourself the best. So ideally, if we are pretty candid about what the job is and what the goals of the job are, you can kind of check the boxes in your head and see whether uh, you think you'd be successful. Because the main thing is, if you're successful, we're going to reach our business goals. And so everybody has the same interest here, right? Nobody wants you to fail. Like We want the program to grow. And we're hiring a person to help us build this program up. So you know, if that's you, you've got to succeed for our business to succeed. And that's a good thing. I mean, it's probably not going to be easy, right? It's not like a, a walk in the park or something, it, which means it's um, going to be some ups and downs. But that's how life is. So if you want to get started in the process, kick us a note at jobs at opkey.com. And, you know, have a great day. See you soon.